Hello awesome people. I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at William H. Keith Jr.'s The Price of Glory. Uh, it's this novel. It's the third novel in the Great Death Legion, a trilogy that we'll be doing a deeper dive into in the Battletech universe. Um, his first book in this in this trilogy, Decision at Thunder Rift, kicked off the Battle, Battletech series by William H. Keith Jr. So we're doing, going back and taking a look at this uh, Battletech series. Uh, and we're going to be taking, doing a deeper dive into these, uh, the first three novels uh, that were published in this series. Um, so what's basically happening uh, in, in our third book, each of these first three books, each are, have a separate campaign on a different planet. Um, this is a military science fiction genre. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing a deeper dive into this. Now I've been doing a look at some of the things that I read when I was a kid growing up. Uh, in, in grade school or junior high or high school in this case, and grad school too, uh, and college. Uh, and I, I picked up the first books in this uh, series, um, uh, in a few few books uh, by Robert M. Thurston, a trilogy. Read them in 10th grade, loved them a lot, so I bought all the older ones that had already been published, and I went back and read and did a deeper dive into the series. It's about, about eight or 10 books that had already been published. Uh, and then I went back. Uh, and then I just kept up with it. Um, and every month or so when another, the next book was published, um, I would read it uh, as soon as it came out. My local Walden Books in Southern West Virginia, growing up there. Uh, and then I really enjoyed the things that were happening in it. Um, so, and, and I found this stuff to be really gripping, and so I continued to read it. And again, there's more than 100 novels in it, and William H. Keefe Jr. kicked them all off. So that's pretty good stuff. Um, the first two novels uh, in this I gave 7.2 seven pluses to so basically they're probably like 7.2 or 7.3 uh two this book i'm almost just going to be given a seven out of i you know again i keep my reviews spoiler free but the key but so i'm only going to tell you the first 50 pages or so of spoilers from it uh just to just keep you off that, that you'll get you know in just the first few chapters uh, of this you know 370 page novel um I, I had two main issues with this. The first is, is that the central conceit, I think, is nice. And it's a little bit different from military science fiction. The unit has been betrayed. Uh, the rest of the universe believes that they are war criminals. Um, and so now they have to survive on their own without while, while people are trying to kill them. Um, not just capture them or defeat them in battle, but are trying to kill them, their families, and, and their support staff, and all these sorts of things, too, because they believe that they're war criminals uh, that have violated the Ares Convention. Um, a convention of rules that were passed centuries ago that every modern sort of you know mili military fighter sort of goes by. So that's sort of the central sort of concept. I like it. Uh, I think you could sustain it for an hour long TV show. I think you could sustain it for probably a novella length, uh, but a 370 page novel. It's just a, you know, and you know, I think that William H. Keefe changes the concept from just surviving on this planet on the planet of Helm. Uh, that's their home planet uh, to um, and fighting you know all these battles uh, to a different genre about halfway through maybe two thirds of the way through um, and, and in order to do that but I don't think that where it was going was something that you could have seen early on and I think he does it probably to his credit but again I just I just don't think that it was done as well um, as the central conceits of the first two novels uh, were done secondly I don't like the ending the last fifty or sixty pages are a three. Our, our tell of this giant battle that we've been building up to for the entire book, right? Um, and so there, the battle has three key flanks, three different passes uh, that there has to be a battle in. Um, and then there's going to be a final battle with all those, the surviving units, right? So there are four separate battles to be told over the course of the, the end of the book. And each of the, the, the three smaller battles, the, the three battles that are being told at the same time are not that detailed and one just it starts it and then it skips the battle completely until it just moves on to the next battle um and preparations uh, the last battle really doesn't have a whole lot of stuff we're really diverted more into something else that's happening with some of the, the men that are a part of the unit than we are with the actual battle itself and i think we could have added a lot of chapters you know in military science fiction and you know the battle tech stuff you typically will get battles one battle not just three flanks of a battle which will be told separately um, in multiple chapters, right? You know, for example, you might find out that this guy just beat, you know, this this equally powered uh, battle mech, right, in battle. And then all of a sudden, he'll be attacked by this bigger giant mech that's about to attack him that's much more powerful than, even on a one-on-one -on -one battle, but he's just finished a battle with somebody else, right? So he's tired and destroyed and defeated. How's he going to win this battle? You find that out, right? Now, the next chapter is the next battle, right? Um, and so it builds over time, right? And William H. Keefe is good at this. Um, and his stuff, his history novels that I've gone back and reread are, are gripping. 
right i mean i read this in three days i read 140 pages the first day i read 140 pages the second day 80 pages yesterday um so i've i have blown through my re my rereading of, of this trilogy I've loved it a lot of the great death of, of a legion uh found it um but I, f I feel like again there was a lot of missed opportunity in the last 50 or 60 pages for a lot more details and one battle to be actually given right um since this is sort of you know the military science fiction genre right so just give me more now, I would prefer uh, to be left after a novel saying, I wish there was more detail in the battle scenes in the last 50, 60 pages, um, than to say, there was too much detail in this novel, <laughs> right? So, I mean, if you're going to leave me wanting more rather than leave me wanting less, right? So, so you know, on, on the list of errors, right? Uh, I, you, you know, but, but again, it's, it's my second major issue in, uh, structurally with the novel, right? This is that it, it leaves you wanting more on these on, on the final things that it's been building to the entire novel so that those are my two major issues with the novel that's why it's getting a seven out of ten rather, rather than higher and a few points less on that uh the previous one's got seven pluses they're probably 7.2 7.3 7.4 should i round it down uh but this one i'm just it's 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 just a seven out of ten but again it was gripping uh, i enjoyed going back and rereading it there's a lot of fun stuff that happened in it and uh, and so I like it. And again, the central conceit's a little bit different than your mil typical military science fiction. Uh, so that's fun too, being brand of war criminals. Now, if this is your first time in a Belltech, it's got a lot of different things. It's got a, a you know an animated cartoon, card games, uh, the war game key. That's a keep that that started everything. Uh, there is a, a role playing game. There are, are more than hundred novels, right? So you, there are there are lots of video games from key video games that were published in the nineties, like the Mech Warrior series. Uh, to, uh, pre to games that are currently out there right now, like the Battletech and the online Mech Warrior stuff. So there are a lot of games uh, that you could have come to. So you might know about this for this intellectual property, but if you don't, that's fine. I do reviews that are spoiler-free, science fiction, fantasy, and horror uh, for this channel. So, um, and again, I've been doing some, going back and rereading some of these things that I read and getting, 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 telling you my thoughts as a, you know, somebody's 45 and going back and how I haven't read these things or thought about these things in decades, right? So this is my first time, and I've read all the, the Battletech novels one time when they were published, and then I haven't touched them since. So uh, going back and rereading them and having some opportunity to have some thoughts on them after a couple of days, I think that's, you know, valuable to that. And the key concept of this channel is that we tend to read older stuff. Uh, you know, the, the channel is named after a famous quote by Jacques Joubert, uh, the worst thing about new books is they keep us from reading the old ones, that French philosopher uh, from the 19th century. He wrote a book and again so um i read these things when they were new but going back and rereading them now you know a couple of years later having read them and enjoyed them when i was a kid um, or in college and in, in, in an early adult um I, you know I, I really enjoyed that sort of stuff out there so going back and rereading them i think there's a lot of value in that uh, as an adult uh, so that's one of the reasons why we're going back and rereading this. And after this, we'll go back and read some other stuff that are in the Battletech universe. But if this is your first time hearing about the Battletech universe, this is set in the 31st century. And um, there are several successor states, five, to be successful, um, and that are they're vying for value. And we're, we're in the heart of the succession wars that have followed. So basically what's happened, we've gained faster than life travel. Uh, we are now in thousands of star systems across the world, but we've never encountered intelligent alien life. We are the only people out there. So we have carried our own good stuff with us and carried our own bad stuff with us too. Um, so we're still fighting all the same battles that we're fighting, you know, today in in this world. So it doesn't have like a future conceit, like we've gotten better over time, right? <laughs> there aren't a lot of technical, logical sort of mumbo jumbo in here. It's very, very grounded a series, which I like a lot. And I like and I enjoy the fact that this is a much more grounded uh, series. Um, you're fighting on the battlefields with all these different units. The king of the battlefield is a battle mech. Um, and then there are tanks, uh, hovercraft, VTOLs, uh, helicopters. Uh, uh, combat armor uh, of various types and then you also have infantry that are, that are running around too doing a lot of things so you have a lot of different battle elements you also have planes conventional planes and aerospace planes that fly in space as well as in the, our atmosphere um, that, you're, that you're following along with in this universe um, for a few centuries there was this thing called the Star League which ruled the world um, and, and the universe and everybody were, were following along with it and it was a time of great pride a time of great privilege a time of everybody growing and moving on and continuing colonizing and so forth and it was a time of great respect and so forth it was a golden age of mankind but after the star league fell in the Ameris coup 
um, for hundred, hundreds of years ago, in by now in the 31st century, uh, five successor states have vied uh, for rulership of the area in, the, in their sphere. And so they're now fighting. And there have been four major wars, they're called the succession wars, that have lasted for a long time, for sometimes decades, sometimes centuries, that have come increasingly more and more. The first two are very strong and powerful, and they attack people and their infrastructure, um, they, ma weapons of mass destruction, that sort of a thing. And then after the two, there was more of a more of a gentlemanly role because we can't continue to lose all of our technology, and so forth. Um, people have slid back into feudalism and that sort of thing. So that's kind of the era that we're riding into in the early 31st century now, uh, with the, with the founding of this. And there's a key step that's going to happen in this novel, Price of Glory, that pushes our technology forward in a major way that will be referred to uh, moving forward. So that's it. That's Price of Glory by William H. Keefe Jr. Have you read it? If so, what did you think about it? Uh, if you want to talk about spoilers, I'd be more than happy to do it. If you disagree with my 7 out of 10, if you think it's more or less, you know, let's talk about it in the uh, comments below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, why not hit that subscribe button? There's going to be a lot more videos to follow up. And then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives. And we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spend this time with me is incredibly humbling. I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.